Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. We've got a QSP Puffin, as you saw in the thumbnail, that we're going to look at today. This is a uh, medium to full size folder. Frame lock knife, S35 VN steel, titanium, solid carbon fiber inlay. Not that laminate stuff. So yes, this is not one of the low budget price knives that I review. Uh, every once in a while, I review something that costs a little bit more. These uh, higher end QSP knives, or even some odd ones, are very hard to find anywhere. I couldn't find them on Amazon anywhere, on any country that I looked at. Uh, very few stores have these. I saw one store in the Netherlands, Nebo Knives, one store in, I think, uh, Germany, Messer Depot, was it? I didn't write it down there. That had some of these. But White Mountain Knives has every single of the seven options in stock on the day that I'm recording this. So that's very good. Uh, this is the thumb stud version. There's also a version with holes. And there's a two hand opening version. They're identical except for how you open them. So if you're interested in a knife like this, stick around. The full review's coming right now. Uh, before we get into the knife itself, it comes in a nice little QSP box. It's one of those pull-out tray boxes, which is quite nice. Holds the knife very safely and well in there. That's a very good thing, and some people want to know that. And the knife itself, like I said, thumb stud. Comes flying open very, very well. Very good looking knife. Well, how big is it or how little is it? Well, let's do the Ontario Rat. Oops, I can't quite fit the Ontario Rat on the screen, can I? If we line up the pivot pins, you can clearly see that the Ontario Rat is a larger knife. The blade is also, you know, almost not quite, not less, less than an inch because this is not a four inch knife, but this is a three inch blade. So if you're looking for a knife that has a three inch blade, this comes very, very close. Now, it is a tiny, tiny bit over. It's 3.055 inches long from the closest spot on the handle from the tip. That's not too big a deal. If you live in a jurisdiction where there's a three inch rule, uh, after a few sharpenings, you know, the edge has to come back, right? And then it'll be under three inches. S35 VN stainless steel. Rockwell, usually it's around 60 that they harden it to. Titanium on the handle scales. Uh, the side that's the uh, working side of the lock, the frame lock, it's got it. And then this side here has got it as well, but a recess cutout to put in this carbon fiber. So yes, that is a nice rounded over piece of carbon fiber that they put in. Uh, by the way, the pocket clip is made for this knife. Not stupid deep carry, but it's a fairly deep carry and you can put it right there as well. There's just a very slight bit of uh, carbon fiber cut out there. Those are the basic things about this knife. What do we have here for the blade? So the uh, blade drops down nice and slow to the tip. The cutting edge has got a bunch of belly and then it's got a straight section right there. Quite nice. And uh, you can see that they uh, sanded the flat sections there horizontally. And then they let the grind mark show from when they ground the blade. Uh, the main bevel there, that uh, saber grind. Two body screws, one pivot screw, plenty strength to hold it on. Uh, it does have a bit of a backspacer here. And the backspacer uh, drops down and all the way to there. And it's big enough so that the lanyard hole is a tube. But we were talking about the blade. So yeah, the sharpness tool right there. That's done very well. There's even a little bit of a chamfer on that cut because that's where the... No, there's not a flipper. And yet they chamfer those little edges as if it would have been able to climb right out. Would this knife be nice as a flipper? I really think they should have done that third option and made it as a flipper as well. So that there'd be flipper, thumb stud, hole, or two hand opening like this. 
that would have really filled out uh, this knife because it deserves to be as a flipper because there's a lot of people that would love to have this knife as a flipper in my estimation. Uh, lock up here, it's fully engaged, but not too far over. Especially on frame locks, I want them to be engaged at least to the 50 halfway mark uh, so that when you're using it, you can't uh, slide it open by accident and release the blade. The nice finger choil in here. There's a bit of a chamfer release there for the uh, lock to be released. So it's easy to get your thumb in there to unlock the knife. Doesn't take much time at all. And it's always consistent. We've got, um, the, uh, if you see a little bit of brown in there, that's some oil that's gotten a little bit dirty. I uh, review knives exactly as they come. And uh, this one came with a little bit of oil there that I have not yet cleaned up yet. I cleaned up the blade itself. I wiped it down because, you know, I had fingerprints all over it. And I wanted to make the video look a little bit better, but not so much. Uh, the rest of the handle, um, it's basically flat and nicely anodized. I th there's this pattern that they did right down here. So you got this pattern and it looks like when the liner lock would be up, like flush, there we go, that there should be these little notches that they made there, but they don't line up. And that's not just on mine. I looked at other pictures of other ones of these and they're all the same way. If you're gonna make some more of these QSP, uh, maybe line up those. It's just a very, very tiny thing, but it does mean something. And uh, like Lee from Love Them Knives said, maybe find a way to get some uh, carbon fiber inlay over here somewhere. Make it that much better than it is. And it is a nice knife. It's very nice indeed. You wanna see how, oh, one other thing. Uh, they even made this have a little bit of a pattern. So they milled out three little trenches to give it the give that it needs to become a spring so that it can push down on the lock. So that's nice. There's some very little mild skeletonization inside. It's not really skeletonization, but it's weight reduction. They've cut off, cut out some of that. And I'll show you the inside of the knife. So now it's taken apart. I can show you all the features. Uh, you can see the weight reduction here to keep the thing at about three ounces. Because this is titanium and titanium is soft, they made stainless steel races, hard races to go there. And then on top of that is where the ball bearings touch. Very tiny uh, ceramic ball bearings. And uh, then the blade. So that helps the thing have a very long wear life. I wouldn't expect anything less from QSP because they know what they're doing. And on the pivot pin, it's D-shaped, which means it stops it from spinning freely uh, because one of the sides here will have a D-shape inside it. They got a nice lock bar insert here, hardened steel. So it's a hardened steel interface. Okay, back to the review. We've got ceramic ball bearings in there, ceramic detent, and uh, perfect alignment when you close the knife. QSP put their name right there, nice and small, I like that. So I like that it's not a huge logo on that side. Nice triangle there. Uh, the thumb stud version I like an awful lot. It just flies open very well. And uh, thumb stud knives are still coming into Canada generally without issues, um, unless it's very loose and you can just shake the knife and make the blade come out. If you come to a sudden stop and the blade comes out, but this guy, I couldn't make the blade come out just by trying to flick my wrist or flick my whole arm and wrist. Let's take a look at how well it goes into a pocket and how it looks when it does. The uh, foot climbs over the dense pants quickly and it just goes right to the full depth. And since it's gray, it's not grabbing attention. It's not a flashy gray, it's a, it's a nice flat gray. But this is not a super budget knife, as I was saying. And uh, I'll give you the price right after I give you all of the dimensions and measurements and everything while this is on the screen. So let's do that now. 84 grams, three ounces. The sharpness, 
125 best. Very good. Nice and sharp from the factory. The cutting edge length, 7.75 centimeters, 3.052 inches. The blade length tipped to the body at 7.76 centimeters. That's uh, 3.055 inches. Blade thickness. I measured it right here behind the thumb studs, 3.04 millimeters. That's 0.1195 inches. So a little under an eighth of an inch, but just barely. We've got a blade depth of 2.4 centimeters, which is 0.945 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind right there, 0.45 millimeters, 17 and a half thousandths of an inch. Awesome. Perfect for S35VN. Well, maybe even a little thinner would be okay, but that's awesome. The grind angle, I haven't measured yet uh, because I ran out of tape. I always put tape, masking tape, on these edges, and then I clamp it into my system that I use to measure the angles. So you'll see it on the video on the screen right here. The next thing is the handle length. The handle length right here, 10.22 centimeters. That's 4.025 inches. The grip area, it's about nine centimeters, uh, maybe a little bit less, around three and a half inches. The handle thickness, right there. So the top of the carbon fiber onto this side. One point, no, that's handle thickness. Where am I? Oh, I'm on handle thickness. I got, got myself confused. 1.15 centimeters, 0.453 of an inch. So decent amount under half an inch. That's quite good. The handle depth, that's this measurement, except for right here, it's a little bit bigger. 2.42 centimeters, 0.951 of an inch. And the depth when it's closed, it's biggest, I think, right about here somewhere. 3.01 centimeters, 1.185 inches. And how long is this knife from tip to tail? It's 18 centimeters, pretty much exactly, which is 7.09 inches. How much does this beautiful knife cost? Well, I mentioned it in the intro. It's $124.70 US. Uh, I did find it, in, like I said, an Australian store. That's $250 Australian dollars. I don't think the Australian dollar is worth less than 50 cents compared to the American dollar. You know, but knives always cost a whole lot more in Australia, just like they always cost more in Canada as well. Well, not always. There's, you know, the odd exception about 0.1% of the time you find a deal that's better in Canada, but that's very, very rare. What do I think of this knife overall? Um, I think I should have bought the stonewash version or got the stonewash version. I think I would like that a little bit better, but this is still beautiful. It looks really, really well done. Uh, it's just that it gets dirty from my fingers because my fingers tend to be a little more oily than the average Joe and uh, or average Jake for that matter. But that's my own issue. And um, if you see anything that looks odd, you can see it a little bit right there, a, a print. Uh, that's just a gain from my oils. I have to wash that. Everything's nice and tight. I haven't, I haven't adjusted any of the screws on here. There's no blade play. Lockup's perfect. Uh, great amount of pressure on the lock arm. Pocket clip looks great. Um, I haven't put it on this side yet. I'll give you a still picture of what it looks like on the left side. I had to use my vise with rubber jaws to get these screws out. Uh, they just wanted to spin freely. Well, after I've got one loose, then the other side just wanted to spin. Uh, and it's not totally all the way in. I didn't want to tighten it up because I still have to take it apart to show you the insides, but that's how it looks with the pocket clip on uh, the left side. It's basically an ambidextrous knife. You know, left-handed people don't have as much clearance behind the thumb stud. As you can see here, there's a bigger space than there is on this side, but let me, if I hold it right, <laughs> not a problem at all. I was just looking at the screen again. It's easy to flip the knife open with the left hand, comfortable, and it's easy to close the knife with the left hand as well. At least I find it not a problem at all. And uh, I grew up left-handed, but I've become a little bit better with my right hand on knives anyways, just because so many knives are right-handed. So what do you like about this knife? Or what do you dislike about this knife? What do you have questions about? Let me know down in the comments below. Um, it's got great fit and finish in my book. 
uh, it's designed, it's produced to some very high tolerances. It's a nice lightweight. Any grip you want to do on this knife is comfortable, unless your hands are just way too big. Uh, but my hands are between large and extra large, between 9 and 10 on the European glove sizes. Yeah, it's not focusing down there yet. Come on. So, you know, between my hands are between, you know, large and extra large, uh, between 9 and 10 in the European men's glove sizes. And that's why I find this knife very, very comfortable. It looks good. The packaging is nice. You know, it's just tiny things that, you know, could have been done better, like matching up those little design marks, those design features on there. I'm glad that those design features were put on there, but unfortunately, they're not done as well as they could have been. Some jipping on the, th on, on the back here? No, it doesn't need it. I feel really comfortable with this this way. Your thumb rests, basically, at least mine does, right over the pivot area. So that provides enough grip for me. And I really like it. And easy to do, delicate work. Just about anything you want to do with this knife. This one's going to stay in my permanent collection. It's just... I do that every once in a while instead of making it available to my Patreon supporters. But I'm going to be reviewing a whole lot more knives this month than I have in the previous month. So whoever wins for October, that is at the 1st of October, um, you're going to have lots of choice, I think. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, just go to patreon.com slash cce. And for $2 or more a month, um, you can help me out. And uh, I don't do a lot, of give, uh, a lot of benefits that you guys have, except for I do more communication with you guys. Not an awful lot more, but I do more. And uh, one of you, every single month, wins your choice of one of the knives I reviewed in the previous month, with the odd exception. So that's how I work that. Uh, thank you so much for supporting this channel with liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing, and uh, even letting the advertisements play. That does help me out. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.